Agutevach, Shavua Tov, and welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Moche Shabbos, Parshas Tzav, Parshas Poro, the 20th day of Adar Beis, the second Adar, coming here from Pasipini, New Jersey. We had, the, we had this Shabbos, the beautiful Russian Shabbaton, with uh, 1,200 Eden, Kinana So, and today we are completing the special chapter, chapter 37, that Alt Rebbe talks about bringing this world to its completion by bringing godliness into this world. And Alt Rebbe is going to tell us about two very special mitzvahs that has a very unique power different than the other mitzvahs. Number one is the mitzvah of tzedakah, giving charity, is going to explain why the mitzvah of charity has a greater power. It is It weighs against all the other mitzvahs. And the other mitzvah, the second one, is the studying of Torah. There are certain things the Torah study has which the other, mitzvah, other mitzvahs don't have. So first of all, he's going to talk about the mitzvah of tzedakah. And he explains that, as we explained in the past few lessons, that ultimately the bringing of Mashiach, which is the fulfillment of the whole purpose of creating this world, is that Hashem wants to have a home in this physical world. And that is done through using all of the energies that we have to elevate them and connect them with Hashem's will. And each mitzvah that we do, the energy that you use, the vital soul uses the energy to do that mitzvah, elevates and connects that energy with this particular energy with Hashem. So what happens when you do, you put in tefillin, or when you shake the lulav, there's the energy that you do in that mitzvah, what is the energy that you use? Is the energy of the movement of the hand. You're doing using the lips. But when you give tzedakah, the power of giving tzedakah is that it elevates everything. Why? Because in order to earn that money that you give away, you invested everything. And even if you didn't invest, even if you won the lottery, and you have the money just like, but, uh, without working hard for it, you still you have money that you're able to purchase food and things to sustain your life, to sustain everything. And when you give it away, it's like you're giving away your everything. That is why the mitzvah of tzedakah is considered so special, that it elevates so much of this physical world to Hashem. Yet on the other end, al Rebbe is going to talk about there is something unique about the study of the Torah, that there you elevate greater, the deeper parts of your soul, the, the thoughts and the speech which is connected, deeper connected with your soul, and the very faculties of your intellect becomes one with God's intellect because the Torah is God's wisdom. So let's see inside and we'll get uh, more details as we see what the Alta Rebbe says in the Stanya. In light of the above, where it was explained that the distinctive quality of the active mitzvahs lies in their elevating effect on the body and vital soul, we can understand why our sages so greatly exalted the virtue of of charity, declaring it equal to all other mitzvahs together. In all of the, the Jerusalem Talmud, charity is called simply the commandment, the mitzvah. For such was the idiom, idiomatic expression commonly used to refer to charity as the commandment. Why is that? Because the, the mitzvah of tzedakah embodies all of the mitzvahs. All of the mitzvahs is to elevate the physical world, and with tzedakah, you elevate 
the entirety of your person, as the Alter Rebbe goes on to explain. Because charity is the core of all the mitzvahs of action and surpasses them all. For the purpose of all the mitzvahs is only to elevate one's animal soul to God, since it is this vital soul that performs them and clothes itself in them. Godly soul cannot perform the physical mitzvah without the body and the vital soul. And that elevates it so as to be absorbed into the blessed Ein Soif light, clothed in them. And tzedakah is such a mitzvah that no other mitzvah has so much power to elevate to Hashem like tzedakah. Now you will find no other mitzvah in which the vital soul is clothed to the same extent as in the mitzvah of charity. As we explained before, that all of the mitzvahs, only a particular part of you is invested in. But the mitzvah of tzedakah, your entirety is invested in the mitzvah of tzedakah. That's what he says, Shebechol ha-mitzvahs ein mislabesh bahem rakoyach echad minefesh achyunis bishas maisa mitzvah levad. For all other mitzvahs, only one faculty of the vital soul is clothed. Example, the faculty of action in the hand, when you put on tefillin, or holding the esrog, the lulav. And even this one faculty is clothed in the mitzvah only while the mitzvah is being performed. So when you do the mitzvah, that's when the godly energy, the, the vital energy, is united with Hashem. After you finish doing the mitzvah, that's it. You're doing other things. But when you're doing tzedakah, it's different. When you're giving away charity, money that you worked for, and everything but you, all you invest, you owe everything to earn that money. And that you give away. This is you're giving, giving away every part of you, and it's a lasting thing. In the case of charity, however, which one gives from the process, from the proceeds, of the toil of his hands. Surely, all the strength of the vital soul is clothed in, meaning it's applied to the effort of his labor, or in any other, other occupation by which he earned this money, which he now distributes for charity. You invest everything to earn that money. Now, now, when he gives to charity this money, to which he applied all the strength, all the strength of his vital soul, so his entire vital soul ascends to God. Hence, the superiority of charity over other mitzvahs. Now, this is true when someone works hard for his money. What about a person? It doesn't work hard. Got an inheritance, won the lottery. Nevertheless, as it says the Alter Rebbe, by him too, still he's able to use the money to have a good time, to live life. And you give it away, so you give your life away. That money that you're able to enjoy, to sustain yourself. That's what Alter Rebbe says. Even he who does not earn the, his livelihood from his labors, nevertheless, since he could have purchased with this money that he gave for charity, he could have purchased sustenance for the life of his vital soul. He's actually giving his soul's life to God in the form of charity. Therefore, charity comprises and therefore elevates more energy of the vital soul than any other mitzvah. And this is, the Alter Rebbe explains now the statement we always say every morning when we start, 
uh, that she and the class with chat were giving tzedakah and the pushka. We don't do it on Mutzah Shabbos, Saturday night. We don't handle the money here. It's still Shabbos dick here. But every morning we start a class with uh, giving tzedakah and we always save with that this gedoyla tzedakah shemekarevas esagirula. That tzedakah is great because it make, brings the redemption closer, brings Mashiach closer. And Alta Rebbe explains why. Why tzedakah brings Mashiach closer? Because what is the coming of Mashiach? The coming of Mashiach is when godliness will be spread in every part of the world. And tzedakah does that. By way, by way of giving away our entirety, every part of our vital soul is given away to Hashem by giving tzedakah. That is why tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. This is why our sages have said that charity hastens the messianic redemption. But with one act of charity, one elevates a great deal of the vital soul, more of its faculties and powers. In fact, that he might elevate through many other action, active mitzvahs combined. As mentioned earlier in this chapter, the Messianic era is a result of our efforts in purifying and elevating the vital soul. Charity, which affects this elevation in such great measure, thus hastens the redemption. Okay, now... Al Rebbe goes to ask a question. We just said how special charity is. But in other places, the Torah says that studying Torah outweighs all other mitzvahs. And Al Rebbe is going to explain that yes, charity has the specialty of elevating the physical world into the Torah, but in other areas, on the other end, there are certain, in certain areas that the study of the Torah has a deeper and a greater uh, advantage. And that is, what the Alter Rebbe is going to explain, that when you study Torah, number one, you elevate the deeper, the inner garments of the soul. What are the garments of the soul? He said there is, there is the inner garments and the external garments. Garments of the soul is the way the soul expresses itself. It expresses itself to thought, speech, and action. Action is considered more of an external garment of the soul. A speech and thought is something which is deeper connected with the soul itself. That's number one. That's what Al-Tarebbe says, Masha over Razal B'Shetal Matei Keneget Kulam. As for the statement of our rabbis, that Torah study outweighs all other mitzvahs, including charity. How can this be reconciled with what we just said? It explains al Rebbe number one. This is because the study of Torah employs speech and, act and thought which are the inner garments of the vital soul. So unlike action, which is an external, which is external, thus only Torah study and not other mitzvahs can suffuse the inner garments of the soul with the light of Torah. That's number one. Number two, the Alter Rebbe says that another thing about the studying of Torah, when you study Torah, you actually connect, include the very essence of your intellect. The intellect itself becomes holy because that same intellect that is able to think material things, that same intellect now thinks and understands godly things, godly thoughts, godly wisdom. So the very essence of the intellect becomes elevated and becomes included into the holiness. So that's another point what Torah study has an advantage. And 
Nechlolis begdusha mamesh kashoyisa gvatera be'iyan v'seichel. Furthermore, he says, the very substance and essence of the intellectual faculties of Chabad, the Chochma bin Adas, the three intellectual faculties of the Klippas Noiga in the vital soul, are actually absorbed into holiness when one studies Teira with concentration and intelligence. And al says, what we just said, the statement that you're actually the essence of the intellectual faculties we transform to holiness, seems to be contradicting what we learned earlier in the Tanya. Early in the Tanya, we explained that there's a difference between a tzaddik and a bainani. A tzaddik is, a, is a one a holy man who transformed the very essence of his animal soul. He doesn't desire anything. Not godly. A bainani, the average and the intermediate person, did not transform. He cannot transform it. He cannot transform the essence of his animal soul. He still has desires. He controls it. He doesn't act on them. He doesn't think of them. It comes out in his thought and he pushes it away. But he cannot transform it. He still has the animal soul in him. So how could we say here that anybody, by studying Torah, transforms the actual faculty, the intellectual faculty? The Alter Rebbe is going to explain that there is a difference. There's a difference between transforming the intellectual faculties or transforming transforming the emotive, emotional faculties. Emotional faculties is very hard to to transform. And in fact, it's almost impossible. Only a tzaddik can do it. Because by nature, by nature, the emotions or something is, it's about self, it's about you, you feel. Feelings about what, what you feel. The intellectual faculties is different. The intellectual faculties is very objective. It's cold, calculated. In 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 the in your thoughts, in your understanding, you are able to come to a conclusion that God is real and God is the thing to do. It doesn't mean that you change it, you don't have any desires. But in the intellect you're able to transform it, that the intellect thinks godly thoughts and Torah thoughts, that can be transformed. And why is that? It is because it says the evil is stronger into the, in the emotive faculties. Because again, emotive, what is evil? Evil is just something which is selfish, not godly. And the emotive uh, faculties by nature is selfish. So that is why it makes the difference that when you study Torah, you're able to transform the essence of the intellectual faculties, but not the emotive faculties. That's what Alter Rebbe explains here. Although Beinanim are incapable of mastering the substance and the essence of the Midas, Chesed, Gvura, Teferas, those are the emotive faculties, and so on, so as to transform them into holiness, that they cannot do the Bainani, only a tzaddik can do it. This is because the evil of the Klippa is stronger in the Midas than in Chabad, the intellectual faculties. Why? It's interesting, he says, the reason is, since that, that level of middah is day, the clippers draw more vitality from the holiness than they do on the level of Chabad, as is known to the students of the Kabbalah. So it says, in the, because they have a greater, a higher source of holiness, that is why they drawn, they went down further lower. And that's why it's harder to transform them back into holiness. So that's another thing, what the advantage of studying the Torah, you transform the faculty of the intellect itself into holiness. Finally, al Rebbe says, yet there's another thing, another advantage in studying the Torah over doing the mitzvahs. Because when you do a mitzvah, you become connected with Hashem. But you become connected like an organ 
The mitzvahs are called the organs of God. So just like an organ expresses and becomes, uh, expresses the soul, the soul expresses the power of sight through the eyes and so on. But it's not one thing with the soul. But the Talmud Torah, when you study Torah, it is one, becoming one with Hashem. Your intellect becomes one with Hashem itself. So that's what Rabbi says here. Aside from this, there is another far more important aspect to the superiority of Torah study over all other mitzvahs. Based on the statement quoted above in chapter 23 from the Tikkun Ezoya, that the 248 positive commandments are the 248 lim- limbs of the king, lim- limbs of God. So he says, Just as, for example, in the case of human being, the vitality of his 248 organs bears no comparison or similarity with the vitality in his brain. Meaning the intellect which is divided into the three faculties, Chachma, Bina, and Das. Just as in the case of the human being, so too, by way of analogy, allowing for the qualification that any comparison between human and divine traits must be distanced, however, by myriads of degrees. I mean, you're comparing our faculties to God, obviously you cannot compare. But in a similar way, it's just using the analogy of a human being that the godly light that is in the brain, so to speak, which is in the Torah, is not even to compare to the energy that is in the organs, which is the mitzvahs. And so, in similar, in, 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 it is with regard to the illumination of the Ein Sof light clothed in mitzvahs of action, compared to the illumination of the Ein Sof light clothed in the Chabad, in the, in the intellectual faculties, the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of one immersed in wisdom of Torah and illumination commensurate with the level of each man's intellect and his grasp of Torah. To the extent that his intellect grasps the Torah which he studies, it is united with godliness, with a unity comparable to that of one's intellect with his soul. Says the Alter Rebbe, after all, yes, the Torah is God's intellect, but after all, we're dealing, when you study Torah, what are you dealing with? You're studying very plain material things. You're talking about laws of, uh, you know, you have the example that the, the, the bull that gores, a cow, how, what's the, the, the laws of damages? You're talking about physical things. So, is this the godly wisdom? So it says the Torah is compared to water. Unlike light, light, when you shine a light, the further it goes, the weaker it becomes. The Torah is the water. Water comes down from the top of the mountain, the same exact water goes down to the bottom. So the same wisdom, Hashem placed His wisdom in the Torah. So even though it comes down into this physical world in, in terms of material things, but it's still the same godly wisdom. It says, Although one grasps Torah only as it is clothed in physical garments, for example, the Glocker concerning two men who, who, who clutch a garment, or one who trades a cow, for a donkey. How then can it be said that through study of such laws one attains his lofty, this lofty level of unity with godliness? Yet the Torah has been likened to water, descending from a high place, and the same water comes down to the lower place as explained above in chapter 4. So we'll 
So we see that the Torah, the studying of the Torah is so great. But nevertheless, our sages say that the essential thing is not the study of the Torah, but the actual deed. So how do you reconcile this? On the one hand, we say the Torah study is greater, has a deeper connection with Hashem. Yet, when it comes to action, we say that it's more important to do the action. So the Rebbe is going to explain that there's two things. Number one, Hashem wants to, that is God delight in this physical world in every place possible. And that is why this is the priority. So when you have an opportunity to do a mitzvah, which brings the godliness into this physical world. And at the same time, you can study Torah. If there is nobody else that can do that mitzvah, then you should do the mitzvah. If there's other people can do the mitzvah, then you can study. You should study Torah because there's some advantage in studying Torah, as we just explained, as a deeper connection. That's what Al Tarebek says. Nevertheless, notwithstanding the superiority level, the superior level of unity with godliness attained by only by Torah, our sages have said the essential thing is not Torah study, but deeds. It is also written this day, meaning during our life in this world, all the important things is to do them. Action. And the Allah rules that one must interrupt Torah study to perform a mitzvah of action when it cannot be fulfilled by others. Why is that? Because this, the active performance of mitzvahs, is man's entire purpose, the purpose for which he was created and for which his soul descended to this world. So that God may have an abode precisely in these lower realms to turn the darkness of this world into light of holiness. So that God's glory fill specifically the entire physical world and all flesh will behold godliness together as was discussed above. But when other people can do the mitzvah, then you should indeed study Torah. On the other hand, if the mitzvah can be performed by others, one does not interrupt Torah study to perform it. Even though the whole Torah is, after all, only an explanation of the mitzvahs of action. This is because the Torah is the level of Chabad, the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of the blessed Ein Saif. And hence, when one is engaged in studying, he draws upon himself the inf- the infinitely greater illumination of the blessed days of light, greater both in its illum- illuminative powers and in a higher quality than the illumination influ- uh, influence that one draws upon his soul through mitzvahs, which are merely organs of the king. So the soul is, has a greater illumination. This is what Rav Sheshes meant when he said, one of the sages in the Talmud, he said, Rejoice my soul, for you do I study scripture, for you do I study Mishnah, for the soul, because that is a greater illumination. As is explained elsewhere at length. Now says the Alter Rebbe, yet there is yet another greater level, one more benefit in, in the Torah study. So when you study Torah, not only do you bring upon yourself greater light, but you actually draw the essence of Hashem into you. 
as the Altarab is going to explain. This influence and illumination generated by one's, by one's Torah study, which man draws from the radiance of the Ainsef light upon his soul and upon the souls of all other of all of Israel. Meaning, as will be explained later, that the light is drawn into the spiritual level known as the Shechina Knesset Israel, the source of all the souls of Israel. And thereby, the Ains of Light reaches not only the soul of the person studying Torah, but also the, that of every Jew. Now, this illumination, which one draws through this Torah study, is referred to as calling. As in the Talmud, this is called calling, as in the Talmud uh, expression concerning a Torah student, Koyre Batayra. When you say Koyre Batayra, what does Koyre Batayra mean? It usually means it reads the Torah. But the word Kore, instead of saying Lamed Torah, when you study Torah, you say Lamed Torah. What is the idea of Kore Batayra, calling the Torah? So the Alter Rebbe says, when you study Torah, you call God. And when you call God, it's like you call a friend. What do you, when you call a friend, what, what part of the friend do you refer to? You refer to his intellect, you refer to his emotions, you refer to the friend himself, you're calling him. Sometimes you can talk about a friend and relate to a certain part of him. You see, if you say, yo, when I talk about my friend, as how smart he is, you talk about his intellect. But when you call him, you're calling the very essence. So when you call it the Torah, when you study the Torah, the Torah are called the names of Hashem. Every time you, call, you study Torah, you're actually calling Hashem. So it says, This phrase means, that in Torah study, one calls God to come to him, so to speak. As a man calls to his friend to come to him. Or as a child will call his father to come to join him and not to be apart from him, leaving him alone, God forbid. Zosha Kosov, now the Alter explains a verse we say every day in the Tehillim, we say the Ashray, we say in the prayer. The verse says, Kore Vashem Lachol Kaira, Lachol Asheikaru Be'emes. God is close to those, all those who call him, to all those who call him with truth. How do you understand this verse? Simply understood, simply read, you say, Hashem is called to all those who call him. All those who call him with truth, meaning they call him with sincerity. But here it's a repetition. He call, God is close to all those who call him, to all those who call him with truth. And al explains that there's a two types of calling. God is close to all those who call him. Anybody who turns to Hashem in prayer, calls to Hashem, God is close to him. But it is even closer to all those who call him in truth. What is truth? Torah is truth. When you call to God, through your prayer, Hashem is close to you. But you're not referring to the very essence. After all, you're calling to Hashem. You're calling, there is a certain things you need, certain things you want. But when you study Torah, it's not about what I want. It's about being one with Hashem Himself. That is, you're calling in truth, in the essence of Hashem. That's what Alter Rebbe explains. This is the meaning of the verse. God is near to all who call, who call him. And then to all who call him in truth. There is no truth but Torah. Indicating that one calls God with truth 
as opposed to simply calling God, only by calling God through Torah study. In contrast to one who does not call him through Torah study, but merely cries, Father, Father. Over he who thus calls God, the prophet laments, says there is none who calls by your name. Commission is by Mokamach, as explained elsewhere. When you study Torah, it says every word in the, in the Holy Torah is considered the name of Hashem. When you study Torah, you're actually calling the names of Hashem. The Alter Rebbe concludes this chapter, that that's this, when you, we understand everything that we just explained, we appreciate the greatness of study Torah. And when we actually sit down and study God's Torah, it becomes so close to Hashem, and we're calling upon ourselves God Himself, so we can certainly appreciate that we appro- approach the study Torah with such deep respect and awe. By dwelling on this matter, the intelligent person will derive means of drawing upon himself a great awe of God when he engages in Torah study, as explained above in chapter 23. This is the end of chapter 37. And Hashem will continue tomorrow, Bezrat Hashem, chapter 38. Wishing you all a good tevach and a simcha. It should be always happiness. We should be always connected to Hashem. And let's hope to have Mashiach very soon.